Hi everybody, welcome back to Theology, where we drink tea and talk theology. Since it's still Advent, we're still drinking the Christmas breakfast blend, and it is the third week of Advent, and so we're talking about joy. So the candle for joy is also sometimes called the shepherd's candle, and it's typically talked about as representing the joy that was brought to the earth through the arrival of Jesus and the salvation that he brings. It's also talked about as the shepherd's candle because they are the first ones to see Jesus after he is born. And so they're the first ones to experience that joy. So what is joy? Joy and happiness are sometimes talked about as being interchangeable or joy being an even more intense version of happiness. But when we look at the Bible and how the Bible talks about joy, we see that there is something else going on. It talks about joy as a fruit of the spirit. And many of the fruits of the spirit are things that impact our actions and what actions we take. This is the same of joy. Um, so some examples are when you look at peace and patience, how those impact our actions when we are acting patiently and when we're acting peacefully. There are lots of different ways our actions are impacted because of the fruits of the spirit. And joy really is an attitude, just like having self-control is uh, something you work for. Joy is also something that gets worked for. And both are things that are attitudes uh, or a state or positioning of ourselves to be in that way, positioning our soul and mind and body to that. Where happiness is just an emotion, something that can happen to us. Joy is something we can work towards choosing and something that can endure even when things are hard. For us as Christians, joy is found in Christ. For um, for he is our rock and foundation. And so the joy flows from there. It doesn't flow from things we experience. It doesn't flow from the things that we might put our hope in. The only thing we should be putting our hope in is Christ. But it flows from Christ first when we are in that relationship. The root of our joy can only be placed in where our faith and foundation is found. We can take joy in other things, like how other people take joy in their kids and, you know, other people might take joy in watching something they find really funny. But it is an outpouring of where our faith and hope is as that shapes how we view the world. And depending on how we view the world is how we experience and how we find joy. Now, to clarify, joy can be an emotional state. There are times where there is that kind of overwhelming sense of joy. However, having joy in a long, enduring way is more than just an experience. It's also a mindset. It's also shown in choices we make towards being able to live joyfully, even when sadness and grief come in, even when things get really hard that doesn't mean that we can't have joy. It means that there is a tension that needs to be held between the two. In psychology, they distinguish between the emotional aspect of joy, uh, so when you feel joyful, but also that there are joyful people who have a lower threshold of experience for joy and they find more things to be joyful about and experience it more frequently. And this is what having a joyful mindset is about. This is what having an attitude of joy is about, is having a low threshold for a joyful experience. And so there are things we can do to work towards having that lower threshold. And part of it is how can we look at things through like a realistic, optimistic lens? How can we see the world as God sees it? How can we find the hope? So when we see things that we can take we can bring our hope to that we have in Christ and when we see things through the lens of our hope we then are able to see the joy in it because when you look at things through the lens of hope you can see the joy that is set before us. So why joy at Christmas? 
Joy is a fruit of the Spirit that occurs when we are grounded in the truth of God. When our roots are placed into the hope that we have in Jesus and the firm foundation in him, joy is able to come out of that place. The joy at Christmas is the joy of arrival, of seeing things start to come to pass. It's the joy found in Jesus himself. Jesus found joy even in the heart. They say, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. So it's not about taking away from the difficulties that we do go through, you know, like the cross is an awful, awful thing. And it's also, there are many things that we go through that we experience in life that are really difficult and really hard and uh, really trying. But that's not what joy is about. Joy isn't about not avoiding experiencing those things or that experiencing them and them not hurting but instead it means looking looking beyond that that it doesn't end with the hard you know like when you're going through something sometimes it can feel like that is just it but it's it never is that is not what we believe that I believe as a Christian that there is always the joy that is set before me and that joy is Jesus. He is always there before me, behind me, pushing me forwards and calling me towards him. Much of joy is about having a Holy Spirit gifted mindset that is outward focused. Joy is something that often occurs or can occur when we see God reflected in his creation, when we see his good works and word in the world or in him himself, you know? So it can be reflected. I can feel joy when I go for a walk outside in the nature that he has created. I can feel joy when I see children laughing on the playground or when I'm hanging out with my younger brothers. I can experience joy in all of these places where I see God shining through and it occurs in that reflection of him. Joy isn't something we get by introspection and reflection and focusing in on ourselves and going more and more in. It comes when we think about ourselves less. Joy isn't about you. Joy is about how we see others. And so feeling more joy, experiencing more joy, is found by looking outwards, looking at other people, looking at other things, and then looking at other things through that hopeful lens, through that Holy Spirit gifted mindset. And so there has been significant psychology research done about depression and in treatment shifting the focus from themselves to helping others. And as a part of treatment, encouraging them to get help from others, but also to help others, to focus outwardly. This isn't the same thing as saying, oh, there are starving children in Africa, but it's more about our ability to focus on other people, that we are not an island, that we live in a community. And this can be going, how can I do something nice for someone here today? What can I do for someone right here, right now? When we spend time with others, whether that be in person or in messaging or what, asking them about themselves is taking the focus off ourselves. It's us thinking about them. When we're planning to do something, thinking how does this impact other people? When we are making decisions in the world, it's about going, okay, I might want this outcome, but is this the outcome that's best for everybody? And people might say, oh, that's really utilitarian or that type of thing. But the whole point of Jesus and the gospel, it's not about utilitarianism. It's not about uh, weighing up ultimate goods and that type of thing. It's just something to think of when you have the opportunity to do something for somebody else, do it because it gets us out of our own heads. It gets us out of our own minds. It's not about, you know, doing a cost benefit analysis for every action on how many people are impacted and how many people aren't going to be impacted and how negatively it impacts these people and how positively it impacts these people. And is that positive impact going to outweigh the negative? It's not about any of that stuff. We don't have to do that. It's just about going, am I caring for the community? 
Am I caring for the people that God has set around me? Is this loving my neighbor? And so we can experience joy when we constantly and actively make decisions to love our neighbor. We get given the gift of joy. We get given joy by being in tune with the Holy Spirit from loving God with all our heart, soul and mind. But that joy comes out when we are loving our neighbor. So it's the that kind of cycle and we need to never worry about running out because it always it's always able to be filled back in and so how does this all relate to joy and again it's about mindset if you are only focused on yourself and when things go wrong it feels like the end or when everything is going well it feels like there's no way you could come down then you're not focusing on a joy that is going to be sustaining and enduring Obviously, those aren't the only things that people can experience when focused on themselves. But it's essentially, the point is that there's this loss of perspective that can slowly erode at people and the joy that we can experience because we are designed to live in community. And many of the fruits of the spirit um, thrive in community-based settings. How are you meant to show love when you are not around other people? How are we meant to show kindness when we're not in the presence of other people how are we meant to show patience when there's nobody else around but, but sometimes it, we have to be patient with our computer but you know that, that idea you can't show patience you can't have a fruit of the spirit in a vacuum they all exist in this world and in this plane of existence and in the body the joy at Christmas is about that tension of the arrival of Jesus and our salvation that is for you personally, but also for us collectively. That means when we focus on joy, on finding things to be joyful about, about lowering our threshold for just experiencing joy and finding joy in all the small little things, we have to look outside ourselves. We have to look outwards and that impacts our inside. It's about seeing the little good things for what they are, something good. By focusing on the good God-given things and by trying to work with God to make his good things happen and, you know, by being Jesus-like, basically, you can look out for other people and you can bring joy into a situation that can be really hard. It changes how you think. Even if you don't feel joyful, trying to figure out how you can do something that would bring joy into a situation changes things. It's how you can carry light into that place, even if you don't feel it yourself. It doesn't mean that God can't work through you. And I guess that's really the challenge for this week, is each day, what's one way where you can bring joy somewhere? I'd love to hear some of the ways you guys have had joy brought to you by other people or you know, shared joy with other people. And if you want to share, or if you need any help coming up with ideas generally, comment down below and maybe we can all help each other bring a little bit more joy in. See you all next week as we talk about love. Bye.